Is higher aged always better? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with The Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Today's video is going to be a fun one. It is probably going to be the last big blind of 2023 and I hope you guys are excited for it. We have eight bottles of bourbons and one rye on the bar top that are aged 10 to 12 years old and bottled at 90 to 100 proof. We've got, let's just go through the bottles right now before we get into anything fun. We've got from our left, we've got Weller 12 year coming in at 90 proof. Then we've got Mick Victor's Tenure. This is a bottle that was borrowed by a buddy of mine, Ivan. He let me borrow this and the Michter's Tenure Rye. This 10-year-old is coming in at 94.4 proof. Then we've got the Knob Creek 12-year coming in at 100 proof. We've got Eagle Rare Tenure coming in at 90 proof. We've got the Pappy Van Winkle Lot B 12-year coming in at 90.4 proof. We've got Widow Jane Tenure coming in at 90 proof. We've got the Michter's Tenure Rye coming in at 92.8 proof. And finally, we've got Russell's Reserve Tenure. If you guys are excited for this video, make sure you drop that like down below to see which one of these bad boys comes out on top. Leave a comment down below as well, letting me know which one you think is going to come out on top. Is the proof going to be the factor? Is the age going to be the factor? Or is none of those going to come into effect and one of these random bottles is gonna come out in first? If you're brand new, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Let's keep this road to 10,000 subscribers going through 2023 and I can not wait for the blinds for 2024. But as you guys know, we go left to right and then fast forward right to left so you guys don't get bored and we get right to the uh, fun stuff. We've got the bot, the labels of each on the front of the glasses now so it's a little bit easier for you guys to follow along and all of the num letters are on the bottom of the bottle so I have no idea. My wife poured all of these for me so this is going to be completely blind, not a clue what is in what glass. But without further ado, let's get into glass one. Glass one is going to be letter E and uh, man, I'm excited for this one. We haven't done a big blind like this in a very long time. So without further ado, let's get into the nose. This is a cherry bomb. I get a little touch of an oak, a little sweetness, a little vanilla. I do like this nose. For 90 proof, these are all, for 90 to 100 proof, I don't think that anything's really gonna come off as too um, astringent to ethanol forward. I think that these are all really nice pours. Some of them are a little bit harder to find. Some of them are very easy to find for all of us. And it'd be really fun to see where some of these easier to find bottles come against these harder to find bottles. I was really excited to open this one finally and put it in some of these blinds because I mean, obviously it's a pappy and super hard to find throughout the year. And you can somewhat find Weller 12 year. And this is going to be the big test and finding out where this Van Winkle Lot B lands in this blind. <clears throat> but off of the rip, I do like this nose. Let's get in the palette though. That's where it's all about. Cheers, guys. It's oaky, it's sweet, it's vanilla, it's cherry. It's super, super delicious. Man, whatever that is, is very, very well balanced. It comes off very beautifully. You're getting that richness, the thickness. It's thick and oily for 90 proof, but nothing is too too um, out there. You know, it's not punching in the face with anything. It's very, very well balanced is what I will say for whatever is in glass number E. Let's move on to glass number two here. Glass two is C, so let's dive into the nose. Much different, much different. I get a little bit more of like a, um, a shoe, there's a little shoe going on there. A little leathery note. I get a little bit more of a medicinal note off of this as well. It's not the, it's not as beautiful of a nose as the first glass is, but I like it. I get a little bit of a brown sugar as well. That's nice, let's get into the palette. I like having these two taller bottles here on the ends because I can hold on to them. Not as good as A. It's not as good as glass number one. It's coming off with this little bit of a bittery uh, note rolling over the, the mid palette into the end, into the finish. Not the biggest um, sweet bomb, but it's sweet in the beginning, but that bitter note comes through 
and I'm really not digging it compared to whatever was in the first glass. So let's move on to the third glass here. I get a little bit of like a lemony note, a touch of vanilla. It's brighter and a little bit more rich compared to glass two. There's a touch of a chocolate in this. I like it though. Let's get in the palette. Cherry, oak, a little bit of vanilla. Nothing too crazy though in that vanilla aspect. It more along the lines of that cherry punch, a little grapiness. It's fruit forward. It's really, really nice. It's delicious. It's light. It's refreshing. I'm going to say that this is probably one of the lighter proofers, probably in that 90 range compared to the others that are, might hit 100. I like whatever's in that. I think that moves ahead of glass two. Glass three went in front of glass two. Let's go on to glass number four. Whoa, that's very different. That is very, very different compared to the other three that we've had so far. It's bright, it's inviting. I get a little bit of like a sweetened oat crumble. There's a little touch of like a, a, a charriness going off on this as well. A sweet toast, a little buttery aspect on it as well. That's a very interesting nose. It's completely, all four of these so far have been completely different. But I, I do, this might be my favorite nose out of the four so far. It's a very, very nice, pleasant nose to go into. It's like a, a buttered lemon cake. Let's get into the palate. You get a touch of like this honey aspect that's coming through but there's really not much of a backbone to this glass. It's lacks, it's lacking a body, a richness, a fullness to come through on it. It's got the beginning and then it doesn't have any middle and it has absolutely no finish to it whatsoever. And I wish it had a little bit more to it Coming from off of that nose, the nose is beautiful and really, really pleasant and enjoyable, but the palate is just dead on this one, and I don't know why. That's very interesting. It's 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 almost non-existent. But let's move on to F number five here. This one is almost like a graham cracker on the nose. I got a graham, uh, um, a cinnamon dusted graham cracker with a little bit of a vanilla icing. And then it's got this like savory aspect to it as well. I like this nose. This nose is nice. It's a little bit better than this one here, uh, glass four. It's toasty. It, it, it smells like it's got a little bit of like a smoky mesquite um, aspect coming off of it. Really, really pleasant. That is an enjoyable sip. Not the most enjoyable, but I think it's a little bit better than whatever was in uh, glass four, H, whatever this is. F has a little bit more of this oaky drying effect that comes over your tongue, that dries your tongue out, makes you want to go back in for another sip. That's a really nice sip. It's not, it's different compared to everything else. It's oaky. It's got a little bit more of these like drier, almost a little touch of an espresso. There's a little bit more complexity off of F than H. So for that, I'm automatically switching them in this lineup. Let's move on to G, glass G number six. Apples, I got like an apple pie off of that. Apple pie and buttered whatever, the buttered pastry, it almost smells like the, the tasty cake apple pie. Wow, that is so nice. It's got a touch of like a, a nutty, uh, a sweetened nut crumble on top as well. Uh, dude, this is going to jump leaps and bounds. If the palate is just as nice as the nose, this might jump into the top three automatically. That is wonderful. Wow. That is so nice. It's thick. It's viscous for one of these lower proofs. It coats your tongue completely. It gives you this really beautiful um, hug that just squishes your tongue with this sweetness and um, enjoyment factor. 
there's no bitterness. You get a little touch of this, like this, whatever this one is, it's a little bit heavier in the rye. So I have an uh, idea of what it could be, but I could be completely wrong off of it. It has this like really nice apple forward that comes through and it's just like cinnamon and clove. It's just an apple pie. It's a baked apple pie with just like a very nice dark brown sugar cinnamon drizzle over top of it. It is really, really nice, whatever is in this glass. Wow, that is so good. And I'm automatically jumping it up into the top four. Top four right now. Let's move on to B glass seven. Whoa. I got a blackberry jam off of the nose immediately. It's dark, it's grape jam, it's blackberry jam. It's it's bringing you everything that you want in a upfront and personal nose. It's rich. These last two noses have been absolutely mind blowing. Wow, that is decadent. And it follows through so beautifully onto the palate. It's just as viscous as the last one, but it has a little bit more of a bitter quality on the on the mid palate. But then the finish, you're getting a very nice fruity aspect coming through on it. But for the bitter aspect, I think I'm automatically just going to bump it into the top five. I don't know if it's better than the previous glass, but I think it is worthy of a top five spot just for that. And after that, We've got to get into glass A, number eight, and let's see what this one has to offer. Strawberries and grass. This is a very reminiscent nose of something that I really enjoy. A vanilla icing, like the royal vanilla, really, really nice soft icing that goes on like a birthday cake or even a wedding cake. You can put this icing on a wedding cake and it's a very nice, uh, soft, not crunchy icing. It's got that touch of strawberry. It's like a strawberry shortcake with the vanilla icing on top. And it's got a little bit of a grassy note coming off of it as well. Let's get another glass. Compared to the last two that we just had, this one has absolutely nothing compared to those. But from what I remember, it is better than at least the previous three. So for that, it's going to get into the, the top five. It had a very nice, pleasant, easy, enjoyable, nothing was saying, oh my God, that's amazing. And nothing was saying, oh my God, that's awful. It's a very easy sipper. It was very approachable. It's very um, um, forthcoming for somebody who um, is newer to bourbon, right? This was a very, very nice, easy, enjoyable. You can find everything in that glass kind of a sip compared to the previous two. The previous two were a little bit more on the lines of um, advanced because they had so much going on and I think a newer bourbon drinker would have been lost in the sauce and didn't know what to look for in those. But with that said, you guys know what we're gonna do next. We're gonna fast forward right to left so that you don't get bored. So I'm gonna go cleanse my palate and I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy the music. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have our final ranking. These top four are leaps and bounds to me, uh, just a bit better than these bottom four. They just had a little bit more complexity, a little bit more roundness, a little bit more boldness, a little bit more in your face flavor profile compared to the bottom four that I just, I, I it's hard to say which is best in this lineup but I feel like within the top four here, any one of them on any given day can be number one. 
but I had to give it to E. I think that the nose on E came through a little bit more and the, the palette followed the nose a little bit more than everything else. Um, whatever was in G, this was the, this is that apple pie cinnamon. It, it, fell, it fell into the same category as E, but for me on E, it had a little bit more of this oakiness that I really enjoyed off of it. So I think it's one of the older ones. I, it's, it might be, um, the, I, I, I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. But for me, I just feel like this one here, whatever was an E, just had this beautiful sweet oak, but it also was just very well balanced. But without further ado, enough jibber jabber about the, the glasses themselves. Let's find out what's in the glasses. And in eighth place, we have letter F. And letter F is gonna go to, that's not F. Letter F is gonna go to Widow Jane Tenure. So that's in eighth place. Widow Jane Tenure coming in eighth place. Seventh place, we have letter H. Letter H, I think was this one here I just saw. Yes, Russell's Reserve Tenure is coming in seventh place. So here we go, we've got two bottles that are shelf available coming in eighth and seventh place. You, you can't write this stuff. You can't, really can't write it. Letter C here, letter C in sixth place is gonna go to letter C. No, not C, what's this? Letter C is gonna go to Knob Creek, 12 year. So there's your one 12 year out the door right there. That's crazy, this is, it. oh my God, I, I, you can't write this stuff, you really can't. In fifth place, right, one, two, three, yeah, fifth place, we have letter A, and letter A is gonna go to, I don't think that was A, no, that wasn't A, oh no, is Michter's 10 year bourbon A? No, it is not, oh my God, is Weller 12 year is in fifth place. We're in our top four, the four that really could have gone anywhere in this blind. And all of them were really, really good. And before you ask any questions about this Eagle Rare, it's not even a store pick. It's not, it's not a store pick. So here we go, in fourth place we have letter D. And letter D I think was the Eagle Rare Tenure. So now we have our top three. We've got the Michter's 10-year rye. We've got the Michter's 10-year bourbon. And we've got the Van Winkle Lappy. I didn't want this to come down to the top three being the most allocated bottles on this blind. But that's where we are, that's where we are today. That is some of these blinds are just astronomically crazy. And it's showing right now that, you know, you might want to pay a little bit more for better bourbon, but I don't want to tell you to do that because at any given day, the, the, the Widow Jane kid came in first place. But here we go, third place is going to letter B. And letter B is gonna go to the Michter's 10 year bourbon. And without further ado, we always want to know what comes in first place first, and that's going to go to letter E, and letter E is going to go to the Van Winkle Lot B, which means the rye. The rye that we had in this bourbon showdown came in second place, the Michter's 10-year rye. Wow. That is a, I, get, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this blind just as much as I did. It is a fun one to put some really heavy hitters up against, you know, shelf available bottles and see where they fall. You know, I mean, I hope you guys are able to come across some of these bottles here. This was a fun, fun video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you drop that like, leave a comment and subscribe. If you, if you guessed anything right, let me know as well. But I, 
you know, this is probably the last blind of 2023. We've got a lot of fun more, uh, we've got a lot more fun videos coming out for the rest of the year. Uh, the rest of the year is not that long. Um, we got a, we got a blind or two, but nothing in this magnitude, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, drop that like, leave a comment down below and smash that subscribe. And until next time, it's been Nathan with the Everyday Drinker. Cheers.